Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2014 Northeast Astronomy Forum, NEEF, for those of people who know the acronym. And right now I'm over with the IOPTRON people. And IOPTRON has become quickly known as the go-to place to get telescope mounts, especially the ones that cover the workhorse aspect of amateur astronomy, people with small refractors up to mid-sized reflectors. They have a wide variety of go-to mounts, everything from small altazimuth designs up to very large German equatorials. I'm going to do something a little different today. Normally I'm talking with one of the employees of IOPTRON, but today I'm going to be talking with Paul Chassie. Paul, nice, nice to see you. Paul is an amateur astronomer, an astrophotographer, and an avid user of IOPTRON equipment. So we're going to get the perspective of a person who is out in the field using their equipment all the time. So we've got a couple of new mounts that you want to show me, right? Yes, we do. All right, let's take a look. Which one would you like to see first? Well, let's start with the small one. All right. This is the ZEQ25 GT mount. It's a Chinese secretarial mount. It's center balanced. Now this is very, very different from what most people are used to looking to. We've got a polar axis, right? And we've got a counterweight on one end, mm -hmm. and we've got the essentially the declination head on the other end. So give me the details. Well, this design is a little unusual looking because there's nothing hanging off the front of this mount as there is in a traditional general or German equatorial mount. Uh, the Z design distributes weight perfectly. You have the counterweight, the declination shaft, counterweight housing assembly in the front. The RA shaft is here, the deck saddle is back here. So consequently, all the weight is right over this fulcrum point. Very easy to adjust in latitude, very easy to, to transport in general. So you've got the weight of the telescope basically on one side of the tripod or the center of the head, the counterweight on the other side, makes nice even, Correct. and as you say, when you want to get the latitude adjusted on the polar mount, it's very simple because it's so balanced. One finger adjustments. All right. What are some of the other features on this? The other feature is that this unique tensioning knob assembly that tensions the worm. Just by unscrewing it and untensioning the worm and then unlocking the switch on the side allows complete rotation for balancing. Very simple to balance very easy to tune. So this little mechanical switch disengages the worm from the worm wheel completely, making it free-flowing. Completely. That, that's on both axes. Right. So it makes it super easy to balance this mount. Once you're done balancing the mount, just flip the lock back over, tension your worm to where you, where you want it, and Ioptron suggests turning it all the way down and backing out, in general, approximately two turns. Uh, and it's ready to go. It's ready to go. So this is a go-to mount with a hand controller. Yeah, the hand controller is a fully featured hand controller. Uh, it allows you to select an item in a night sky. And once you've selected an object, you just hit the, the enter button to go to, and the, the mount will slew exactly to that target. 99.9 .9 times that target will be in the field of view of a typical telescope with a 25 millimeter EP. If you're imaging with a camera in live view, it will be in the live view screen. Very, very accurate. I'm going to. I'm going to put a little editorial comment in here. I've reviewed a number of the IOPTRON mounts in Sky and Telescope magazine, uh, actually including the ZEQ25, and one of the things that constantly impresses me about IOPTRON's hand controls is the, how intuitive they are. It can be months between the time when I have seen one control and another and I pick it up, and within a minute or two I can figure out what I'm doing. The menu items are very clear cut, you can step through it. It doesn't have an awful lot of confusing material in there. It's really nice. That's exactly right, Dennis. I've experienced the same thing. You can put this mount down for weeks at a time, pick it up, move it outside, turn it on, and know exactly what to do and where to go without having to refer to a user's manual. It's very, very user-friendly. All right. So this scope has a built-in polar scope, correct? Yes, it does. Polar scope on this mount is extremely easy to use. It's, it's very, again, very user-friendly consist of an excellent reticle. The hand controller will actually show you a graphic interface, a, a display of where Polaris should be placed on the polar scope reticle. Simply by moving the latitude and azimuth adjusters and placing, moving Polaris with these two knobs to the position where it should be, and then locking the mount down, you are ready for the entire evening. Yep, whether it be observing or astrophotography. And then the, the little cover here, the polar scope, you just view through there, 
It's very open. You can get your head in easily and look through. Of course, yes, you have you to pop off the little cover here so you that can look help. toward Polaris. Mm -hmm. And it works in the northern and southern hemispheres with the appropriate stars. That's right. You can select northern or southern hemisphere in the hand controller, depending right. on what part of the world you're in. All right. This is a really nice portable system. What's the weight on all of this? The mount head is 10 and a half pounds. The tripod actually weighs more at 11. So total weight's about 22 pounds. You can add another five pounds for the counterweight. And how much can you put on it? You can hold up to 27 pounds on this 10 pound mount. So it's a nice little portable system. Absolutely. All right. Well, I know we've got something that's really different here yeah. we want to take a look at. Let's move over and try Let's that. Let's move this lightweight mount and look at the CEM6. All right. So what do we got here? This is the new Ioptron CM60 mount. It, again, it's center balanced. All of the weight is distributed directly over the fulcrum point of this mount. So you've got the counterweight up at the north end, Correct. and you've got the declination assembly centered between the polar bearings, but moved further down than the traditional German equatorial, which would have it hanging right. way off on this end. So that keeps that weight nice. All right, what are some of the details about this? Well, as you said, a German equatorial mount typically Everything would be hanging off of this axis, off the end of this RA shaft. Here, it just makes more sense. It's supported very well by these two large bearings. All the moving parts are here, so it's perfectly centered over the fulcrum point of the mount, and it distributes the weight perfectly. It's a very smooth, excellently tracking mount. In addition, as you can see, the mount is entirely metal. The GPS is located in clear side of the sky, locks in very fast, even indoors, under two minutes so outside. The, so the GPS here gets the go-to so it knows the date and the time Correct. and the location. It, All the things are set by GPS. It automatically enters that information, transfer, transfers it to the hand controller. So if you're using the mount today here in New York and you're flying to California tomorrow, when you plug it in, that GPS is going to locate your current location, date and time, plug it all into the hand controller so you can be up and using within a matter of seconds, actually. Ready to go. Ready to go. Some of the other features. So like the ZEQ25, this has clutches to completely go freewheeling. That's right, Dennis. This has a very easy to use clutch system. Just turn this knob out and it completely disengages the axis. It's, and there are no springs. It's magnetic. It's a patented technology, brand new with Ioptron, and it works beautifully. Everything on the mount is stainless steel fittings, no rusting. The latitude lock, the azimuth lock, and they even give you a spiffy little stainless steel wrench that can, you, you can use to lock and unlock all your adjustments. The, if you notice also, the latitude adjustment is built just like a precision tilting milling machine vise. Once these latitude locks are locked down, that mount is not going anywhere else. All right, so this mount also has the same very high precision polar alignment scope. Certainly does. And uh, if you notice, the all the covers are thread on. They're not friction tight. They're not right. push on. They, they thread. So they won't high fall quality. off in the night. You won't lose them. High quality also. All right. So I notice that the saddle up here is very unusual. You want to tell me about that? Yeah, this is a great saddle. It's got a dual uh, Vixen Lost Mandy saddle. It's spring loaded. So you can use a tip-in method for putting the OTA saddle in, prevent scratching, and make sure you have a secure connection. But the nicest thing about this declination saddle is the back of it, where you have four USB ports and a 12-volt port, plus a six-pin connector port for attaching all your leads for camera and power. Everything is handy right underneath the OTA. You don't have to have 10 feet of cables strung out to your power, your power pack or power supply. So you've got your telescope up here and your wires coming from the telescope just directly down here. They don't have to hang right. off the mount, get caught on anything. Power supply and four USB ports. Correct. That's really nice. And the wiring, of course, goes through the mount. You pull it out down at the bottom. Yes, it does. Very good. So this version of the mount is the CEM60EC, which has advanced features for astrophotographers. Correct, Dennis. In addition to the fancy red-colored uh, coloring on the knobs on this mount, it does have an extremely high precision encoder on the RA axis. In fact, this mount from the factory is guaranteed to have a periodic error of less than one half arc second peak to peak as it ships. As it comes, one half second periodic error, and that's because of the high precision encoders. Correct, that's one half arc second peak to peak, so one arc second of total periodic error. That's amazing. Right out of the box. All right, now that's a high precision version of this. There's yes. also the regular version of the CEM60 as yes, well, there right? Is. Yeah. And that comes 
It's essentially the same thing, it just doesn't have the high precision encoder. It does not encoders. have the high precision encoder built in on the RA axis. All That's right. the only difference. So Paul, what's the uh, payload capacity of this mount? Dennis, the payload capacity of this mount is 60 pounds, but let me tell you what Aptron has coming out by the end of the year. They're going to offer the same type of mount in a 120 pound capacity. It'll be the same type of mount on steroids. Wow. 120 pound capacity. 120 pounds. A real observer. Almost as much mount. as I, you and I weigh together. <laughs> so, uh, I know there was one little interesting thing when we were setting up here that you showed me. Can you want to tell me about this? Yeah, sure. This plate on the front of the declination saddle can be custom engraved at an option with any script you want. It'll be custom laser engraved for you at the time of purchase. So you can have your uh, name put on it? You can have anything you want put on it, Dennis. That's an interesting little... Except the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, That's probably a character limit. A little tough to fit. So, Paul, I want to thank you very much for telling me about this equipment. Pleasure, Dennis. If viewers want to know more, they can turn to the website, which is... Yep, www.ioptron.com. We have a full complement of information for anybody that's interested. Uh, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope here at 2014 Neath in Suffern, New York.